In this video, we're going to talk about section 14.1, what are called parametric equations. So to start with, let's uh, do kind of revisit an old problem. Suppose we wanted to find an equation of a line between the point negative 1, 4 and the point 2, 2. So to do that, we uh, in what we would call rectangular uh, coordinates, we, or rectangular form, we would first look for the slope. So to do that, we can say 4 minus 2, the change in y, over negative 1 minus 2, the change in x, and that would be 2 over negative 3, or we'll say the slope is negative 2 thirds. Then we could do what we call our point slope form. So we could just go y minus 4 is equal to negative 2 thirds times, and then x minus negative 1 would be x plus 1. And that would be a version of that line. Now, what we would get if we were going to graph that is we would see that we could think of, you know, starting at negative 1, 4. So there's negative 1 and 4 would put us up here. So there's our point negative 1, 4. And then we would go to the point 2, 2, which would be right here. And our line would connect those points and go on forever in each direction. Now, here's maybe a different way of thinking of this problem. Suppose that we want to think that at time 0, so at time t equals 0, the particle, if we're going to think of this as a particle moving from negative 1, 4 to uh, the point 2, 2. At time 0, our particle, I'm going to say the particle, is at the point negative 1, 4. And then uh, at t equals 1, so maybe 1 second, 1 minute, 1 hour, we're free to determine whatever our time increment might be. At t equals 1, uh, the particle has moved, and so it is at the point 2, 2. So what that might look like then is we could say the x-coordinate of our point is going to be at negative 1 at time 0. And then by the time 1 second has elapsed, it's then going to be at an x-value of 2. So that is it has moved 3 to the right. So we could think of that as being 3 times the t equals 1. So notice that when time when t is 0, the position of that particle, just in terms of x, is going to be negative 1 plus 3 times 0, would put it at our point uh, that has x coordinate negative 1. And when t is equal to 1, then it is now going to be at negative 1 plus 3 times 1, we'll put it at an x value of 2. In a similar fashion, the y position of our particle is at time 0, it's going to be at 4. And then in 1 second's time, it's going to move to 2. That is, it's going to move 2, two, two down. So it's going to go, I'm going to call that a minus 2 times t. So this now, this equation, tells us our position of the particle with respect to y. When time is 0, t is 0, we're going to be at 4. And when t is 1, we'll get 4 minus 2 times 1 will put us at a y value of 2. So these, we would say, are known as parametric equations. So what parametric equations give us uh, for this particular curve, and I know it's a straight line, but in general we'll call that a curve, is it's going to tell us our position, the position in terms of x and y, but given uh, in terms of another variable known as a parameter, that is our parameter is t. So it's defined in terms of something else. Now, usually, or oftentimes, not always, uh, but usually we're going to think of this t as representing time. 
So what this does then, and so the resulting parametric equations are called a parametrization, that's a mouthful, a parametrization of our curve. In this case, the straight line. Now, this um, parametrization gives us some, I mean, there's some advantages to this that we couldn't do before. So there's some real power in these parametric equations. So we can now introduce this idea to our curve, which before we saw just really gave us the path of this particle, if we wanted to think of it as particle motion. But it could never tell us where the particle was at a moment in time. Now we can say at time zero, the particle is going to be here at negative one four, at least with this parametrization that we have. And at time one, the particle has moved to the point two two. This also gives us a direction that this particle is moving along the line in the direction that I can show there with those arrows. So we get a starting point that at time zero we know where this particle is, and we can introduce this idea of time. Where is the particle at a moment in time? Now, the parameterization is not unique, so we could, if we wanted to, for example, think of this path. Remember, the, the x and y version is a path. It doesn't have the ability to tell us where the particle is at a particular moment in time, but we could do a different parametrization of this curve if we wanted to say at time zero, maybe it started at two two, and then at time one, maybe a second later, it was gonna be at negative one four. So in this case, what we could do is say that the x was going to be at 2 initially, and then it's going to move left 3, which is a negative direction in the x uh, direction. So I'm going to say a minus 3t. So now we can see that when with this parametrization is at time 0, we're going to start at the point that has x value 2, and at time 1, we're going to be at negative 1. Similarly, we can say the y equation is going to be, we're going to start at a y value of 2, and then after one second, we're going to move to, time, to a y value of 4. So that means it's going to increase by 2. And so this would be a different parametrization of that same path, that same uh, uh, that same straight line. And this par uh, parameterization would start at 3 at 2, 2, and would end up one second later at 1, 3. So that parameterization would go in the other direction. Now it's possible to, there's also now, we can see with this uh, these parametric equations, an element of speed that's going into play there. So our original par parameterization went from negative 1 to 4 to 2, 2 in one second, one unit of time, whereas our other parameterization went in the other direction, but still had a similar speed. It traveled that distance in one second. We could make it go faster or slower if we wanted as well, and so there are many different uh, parameterizations of a given curve. Okay, so let's look at another idea. We can uh, go the other direction. We can start with some parametric equations. So I'm gonna say in this case, if x is equal to three minus four t, and y is equal to negative two plus three t. Let me back up a little bit here. Let's see how we can graph these um, parametric equations on our calculator. So uh, if you will, we'll do the first parameterization first. So if you go to your calculator and turn it on, 
Now go to mode and you will go down to that fourth line where function is highlighted, right arrow to the parametric and hit enter. That's going to put you into parametric mode. Now when you hit Y equals, you'll see this, uh, I'm going to get a different color here. So you're going to see an X1 uh, T and a Y1 T equals, and that's going to be one parametric curve. So for the first one, let's put in our first parametrization. So we're going to plug in the negative 1 plus 3, and when you hit the x comma t comma theta comma n button in parametric mode, it'll show up as a t. Then down arrow to the y1 t, and we can put in our uh, 4 minus 2t. Then hit the window, and uh, we can go, since we know that our curve is going to go from negative 1, 4, 2, 2, 2, let's go for the x, uh, for, let's go for t min and t max. We're going to go from 0 to 1, because we're just going to go uh, from t equals 0 to t equals 1. For the x min and x max, let's go 1 on either side. So let's go negative 2 to 3 on the x min and x max. And for the y min, y max, let's go from 1 to 5. Now when you do that and you hit uh, the when you hit the graph button there, you should see that it will trace out this part of the curve that starts at negative 1, 4, and it's going to travel along and end at the point 2, 2. So it's starting at negative 1, 4, and ending at the point 2, 2. So uh, that's just showing. Now, if we wanted the entire line, you know, that what we get in our rectangular coordinates, you know, we say is going to go forever in each direction. In order to do that, we would have to make our uh, domain go from negative infinity to infinity on the values of t. Now, you can see if you... Um, drop down then to uh, go back to y equals and drop down to the next one. You can then put in our second parametrization. So you can put in the 2 minus 3t and the 2 plus 2t. And let's maybe uh, when you arrow to the far left, after you've done that arrow to the far left, and make, let's see if we can make that into a fat line. So it'll type over that. So when you, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to the fat line. And then hit enter. And then you can now graph it. You'll see the first line uh, is going to go, is going to, as we said, it's going to start go with the green. It's going to start at negative 1, 0, and it's going to move to the point 2, 2. So we would show the arrows on that going in that direction. And then you will see the fat line, the one, the second parameterization will start at the point 2, 2 and travel to the point negative 1, 4, but going in the other direction. Okay, all right, so now let's drop down to this other idea. This time we're going to start with parametric equations, and we're going to try to convert that into rectangular. So we will lose here that idea of time, but we'll get something hopefully that's more familiar. Uh, we're going to get something in the form y equals f of x. So this is known as eliminating the parameter. So we're going to eliminate the parameter.
And there's two different strategies for this, depending on what kind of parametric equations we have. Essentially, do we have some that have sines and cosines, or do our parametric equations not have sines and cosines? In this case, they don't. So what we're going to do is pick either one of these, and we're going to solve for t in one of those equations. And these look pretty much equally complex. So I'm going to just then choose the x1. So we're going to uh, get the t by itself. So I'm going to subtract that 3 to the other side, and then divide the whole thing by negative 4. And we have now uh, solved for t. We'll then plug this expression in for t in our other parametric equation, the one that has y in it. And so then we're going to try to simplify this a little bit. Uh, how much we simplify is a little bit of choice there. I'm going to pull the negative 4 out and let it join our uh, 3 in front there. And then that's going to make that be a negative 3 fourths and leave behind the x minus 3. And hopefully you recognize this as the point slope form of an equation of a line. So that's a recognizable form of y equals f of x. And we can stop there. Okay, so these parametric equations will result in a path that will be a straight line. And this is the straight line that that path will represent. Okay, so let's do a different, eliminate the parameter. I'm going to pick a, a more a different kind of parametric equation. So these are going to have sines and cosines. So our strategy is going to be a little bit different. Um, let's graph this first. So we're going to graph this while we are in parametric mode. So for our t values, we're going to go 0 to 2 pi. And for our x values, uh, I'm going to go, we know that the largest that x and y can be is going to be 1 and negative 1. So our x values are going to be between negative 1 and 1. Now, that is called the aspect ratio on our calculator. We have more pixels horizontally than we do vertically. So to make things look like they're supposed to, I'm going to use that aspect ratio of x to y be 3 to 2. So since the y values are going to go from negative 1 to 1, that's the biggest they are, that the y will ever be, then I'm going to choose the the x values to be one and a half times that, just so that it will look the way it's supposed to. So when we do that, we're going to, uh, on our calculator, we're going to, uh, let's go to y equals, and we'll clear off that stuff that was on there, and then uh, we can, for the x1 of t, we can put in our cosine of t, and drop down and get sine of t for the y1. Then for the window, we're going to go from 0 to, and the t max, I'm going to go 2 pi. Now your t step, I didn't talk about this before, you can, uh, generally you can put in like pi over 12, or if you, if you want, just put in 0.1. That's going to be a nice uh, compromise between uh, if you make it too big, it looks really chunky on the graph. And if you make it too small, it gets really slow. So that's kind of a nice compromise between speed and smoothness of the graph. So for the x min, I'm going to go negative 1.5. For the x max, I'm going to put in 1.5. I'm going to leave the scale as 1. That doesn't really much matter. I'm going to go negative 1 for the y min and positive 1 for the y max and leave the y scale as 1. Now, when you graph that, what you should see is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. Notice also where the direction and where it starts. 
So our circle is going to go counterclockwise and it will have started at 1, 0. Because you can see when you put in 0 for t, you're going to get cosine of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. Okay, and we can show the direction by putting arrows there that it's going counterclockwise. So let's eliminate the parameter here. So what we're going to do here when we have sines and cosines is not like we did earlier where we're going to get t by itself. Instead, what we're going to do is recognize our famous um, uh, identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And so since cosine of t is x, then we are going to think of that as being x squared plus y squared equals 1. So here we are replacing the cosine t by the x and the sine t by the y to come up with this. And so there is our rectangular equation. And we typically won't solve for y here. That's just going to make it more complex. That hopefully is a recognizable um, function. It's actually two functions because a circle, remember, uh, each semicircle is in its own right a function, and the full circle is not exactly a function. It will fail the vertical line test. Okay, so let's do some more, uh, get some more practice with eliminating the parameter. So we are going to eliminate the parameter for some of these. And we'll get some, start with some simpler ones and then get to some more complex ones. So let's start with x equals t plus 1 and y is equal to 3t minus 2. So what we can do here is solve for t, and I would choose x in this case. We're then going to replace the t in the other parametric equation by the x minus 1. And so that is going to be 3 times x minus 1 and then minus 2. And so that will be 3x minus 3 minus 2, and hopefully we recognize this as a straight line, and uh, it's got slope 3 and y-intercept negative 5. So let's look at a different one. Here we have x equals the square root of t, and y is equal to t squared plus 4. So to eliminate the parameter here, Again, we would notice, um, at least in our mind, we should see that we are only going to be able to allow values of t that are greater than or equal to 0. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means once we eliminate the parameter and see what this is going to look like. So uh, I'm going to just um, plug in. So we're going to get here, solving for the t, we'll get t is x squared, and so substituting that in over here, we are going to get that y is going to be x squared squared plus 4, and so that would be y equals x to the fourth plus 4, and we would notice that because this is only going to be defined for t greater than or equal to 0, that means our x values here would only be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so this, if you graph it, would look sort of like a very narrow parabola that opens up and has a y-intercept of 4. So this would look something like that, and we would not get the left side there. So we would get only the right side because we couldn't use, there's no way for us to get a value of x that's going to be negative. Let's look at another one. So let's do x equals e to the t and 
y equals e to the 2t. So there's a couple of strategies here to eliminate the parameter. The simplest one, if your algebra is good enough, if you can recognize that y equals e to the 2t is really e to the t squared, because our rule for uh, exponents is that when you raise a power to a power, you multiply those, then we could replace this e to the t by x and go straight to y equals x squared. And that would be our uh, equivalent rectangular equation. So that's going to give us a path that's going to be a parabola. And again, you might notice, if you're thinking deeply into this, that no matter what you plug in for t, e to the t is always going to be greater than 0. And so that would mean the path that we get for if this was a particle motion, this would never have a negative value of x. Okay, you'd only get half of that parabola. Now, I'll just show you another way. It's a little more complex. If you didn't see the algebra that we had going this direction, we could eliminate the parameter here by taking the natural log of both sides and getting that t is going to be the natural log of x. This is going to be a little trickier because now we get e to the 2 times, and then we're going to replace the t by the natural log of x. Now we know that an exponential base Euler's number and a logarithm base Euler's number are inverses of each other, and they can cancel each other out, but not until we get the 2 out of the way. So we would have to use our properties of logarithms and know that when you multiply by 2, you can bring that up into the what's in the logarithm as an exponent. Then you can now cancel the exponential base e and the logarithm base e to get to our x squared. So these are some tricky eliminate the parameter problems. Okay, and let's look at another one. This might be a little bit surprising. So if we have x equals the natural log of t, and y is equal to t squared. So to eliminate the parameter, we are going to exponentiate both sides. So that is going to make t equal to e to the x. We'll then take that over to our equation for y, and that is going to make that look like y equals e to the x squared. And then using our property of exponents, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents, and so that also is going to be e to the 2x. Kind of surprising. Okay. So it turns out uh, that it kind of looks sort of like the one where we started with parametric equations there. And we'll do one more. So we'll look at x equals 2 cosine t and y equals 2 sine of t. So to eliminate, now here we have sines and cosines, so we're not going to go all the way to t. We're just going to try to get the cosine t by itself and the sine t by itself. Then we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, so we'll plug these in for the sines and the cosines and get x over 2 squared plus y over 2 squared equals 1. If we do a little bit of work here, we'll get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. If we multiply through by the 4, we'll see hopefully something that we recognize from our earlier work. And that is going to be a circle centered at the origin 
with radius 2. Okay, very good.